the head coach at Auburn, another coach with a lot of tenure, 271 wins, 178 losses, 50 ties, 24th season for Hoppe. Auburn with the turnover there, or Texas A&M rather with the turnover, the, Al the Auburn Tigers capitalize on it. Foul called on Texas A&M on Miley Hayes. Be a free kick coming up for the Tigers. And Emmy Craven will come up to take it. Craven, outstanding center back for the Tigers. Grad student out of Alpharetta, Georgia. There's Craven, gets her foot into the ball. Beckman for Texas A&M is going to send it out wide to Colvin. Head to Hayes, who will lay it off. Back to Kate Colvin for Texas A&M. You throw in on the far side of the field. And Jeff, you were right, Texas A&M wants to look and use the speed outside of Colvin and Pante on the flanks and then capitalize on that attacking mentality that the Aggies have between uh, uh, Beckman and Becerra and Hayes. Yeah, and uh, again, Becerra on the ball here, trying to find Pante in behind. And, and she's called for offside. Offside call on Mia Pante, but that was a great example yeah, of that, just what we were talking exactly. about. Exactly, Pante drifted wide towards this near sideline, opened up that gap, committed the um, committed Colson, the right back for Auburn wide, opened up that channel. Becerra tried to slide her inside, or tried to play that ball and get her in behind Pante, just a couple steps offside there. Uh, but again, a 4-1-4-1 kind of referred to as a version of the 4-5-1. a and going to treat this more as a 4-3-3, I would think, and especially through the middle third and the attacking third. They want to find Colvin and Pante early and often and really, really work the, work the width of the field through the middle, channel, middle third of the field. Katie Smith with the steal. There she is with the ball there. Lays it out wide to Carolyn Calzada. Her first time back in the starting lineup in four games. Been battling uh, a knee problem. No call there as Becerra goes down. Of course, Calzada's brother is at Auburn. Quarterback. Aggie legend. Absolutely. So you Auburn fans, if you've heard that last name before, you know where it comes from. Nice steal over there by Auburn. Oh, good ball, trying to get it ahead to Thatcher, cut off by the Aggies. That's Calzada bringing it up to Pante. Well defended from Colson there. Absolutely. And just by the uh, the early minutes of this game, Dave, the, the intensity is, uh, you know, makes it almost feel like a postseason game. There's so much on the line here for both these squads, not just in terms of, of, of uh, you know, looking at the obvious, like we saw in the pregame, the SEC standings qualifying for the tournament, but there's our RPI implications uh, in this game as well. Oh, absolutely. Right now, you know what? I'm going to look it up before I say that. I was going to rely on A&M sitting at 27 memory. coming into the night, and uh, Auburn at 40, I believe, coming into the evening. Listen to you. I am impressed. Smarter than I look, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can be said for both of us marginally, but nonetheless. <laughs> Not because we're so smart, but just because of the way we look, I think is, the, is a problem there. <laughs> Ball back in the middle of the field to Katie Smith. She'll send it back to Caldwell in goal for Texas A&M. And quite frankly, I'm surprised. I thought Auburn would show a little bit more high pressure on A&M's back four with their front three. But they're sitting well, back and kind of defending in a 4-5-1, keeping things in front of them. Nice and I think, and I think part of the mentality, Becerra. sorry, Dave, I think part of that is because they want to keep Carlina Sample and, and Carolyn Calzada in front of them. They don't want to give them that space in behind by playing too, wide, too high and wide forwards and really commit to attacking and defending in a 4-3-3. Nice look there. 
Hayes getting squeezed between two defenders. You got Emmy Craven up there at 6'2", and Miley Hayes at about, uh, at about uh, oh, listed at 5'7", but I think that's been a little bit generous. Calzada ahead to Hayes. Whistling a foul call there on uh, Madeline Moore. Have a free kick coming up for Texas A&M. Again, good second touch here for Miley Hayes. Solid first touch, didn't get it caught underneath her foot. Looked to create space and face goal with her second touch. Madeline drawing the foul from Madeline Moore, about 25 yards away from goal towards this near corner. It's Kate Colvin for the Aggies. Auburn keeping a high line. We've seen Kate Colvin score from this distance against Rice. But bending ball in, Prohaska drifts to her left. And looks like what she was trying to do there, bend it into that far side, inside that far side post. Here we see it here, Kelvin steps up. Good bend on it, on target, just not enough pace to beat Prohaska. Auburn with the ball. Be a throw in for the Tigers on the far side. on there by Haddock, recovered by the A&M back line, Quinn Cornock. Just underway here in College Station, and Jeff, you know, I look, look at both of these. Both of these teams have been fairly aggressive in the early going, willing to take a few risks, looking to, uh, and I think you kind of mentioned it early on in the first minute of the game. You know, you can you can see some intensity here uh, as as both of these teams realize this is a key SEC game. Yeah, it really does have that postseason feel to it. Mia Pante wins it there for Texas A&M. That was Hannah Wesh, number nine for Auburn, providing the fifth. That's Kate Colvin on the far side, getting against going against Haley Whitaker, number one for Auburn. But if it cleans it out, uh, clears it out of bounds, it'll be a throw in for Texas A&M. There you see Whitaker. You look at those Auburn jerseys there and they're in, the, in their traditional blue and orange. A&M wearing the pink tonight, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Hayes, trying to slot it through, trying to get it there to Beckman for Texas A&M. I believe that's, uh, yeah, it's Beckman for Texas A&M. You got Beckman and Becerra pl uh, playing right against each other. One of them's 14, the other is four. And uh, and th those two are really starting to evolve and grow into the game and becoming a lot more comfortable with one another uh, in combination and playing with those two attacking mids. That provides them a certain level of, of uh, defensive liability, if you will. So one of them can, can get forward and become a second forward without hesitation. The other one will drop in central link and serve as that second defender behind them. So uh, again, a, a combination of those two players are, are, are definitely crucial to what AM wants to do tonight. Um, and again, they're starting, to, and them paired with Georgia Lebb as that lone holding midfielder, really starting to get comfortable with one another through that center channel. Emmy Craven with the free kick you saw in the opening seconds. She can put some air under the ball. Bounces. Sample gets ahead on it, then Becerra does. That's Beckman clears it out to Colvin on the far side. In the middle to Hayes. A&M on the counter, outside to Colvin. Cross sent into the body of uh, Haley Whitaker and a throw in Texas A&M. And Auburn doing an amazing job, just textbook defending a counterattack right there. Really, really did well. The back four collapsed in, really defended within the confines of the 18, kept everything in front of them. And once that ball went wide to Colvin, they comfortably had numbers back. So that allowed Whitaker to step out into that 1v1 situation to defend Colvin. Goal kick coming up for the Tigers.
lost out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Texas A&M. Carolyn Calzada right in front of the Auburn bench. Here comes Auburn and they lose it. Get it back. Out wide, far side. Lost over the end line. It'll be a corner kick. Our first of the night went off of Texas A&M. The Aggies, Kate Colvin. And Haddock will go over to take the corner. That was Whitaker all the way in the attacking third, winning that corner kick 1v1 with Kate Colvin. Corner comes in. Poked away by Caldwell for Texas A&M. Good decision there from Caldwell to just to usher that away from goal. Yeah, because she had uh, Olivia Candelino right in, right in her face. Ball far side for the Aggies. Quinn Cornock brings it up. Long pass. Hayes tried to leave it for Pante as Pante running a diagonal outside in. Not enough pace on that, picked off. And it's going to be Auburn who comes back. And a Haddock held there. And the uh, call was delayed because of advantage, but it'll be a free kick coming up. So you see Mia Pante for Texas A&M. Guilty of the foul. Official go up to her. And Tell her he would appreciate it if she wouldn't do that anymore. And Emmy Craven with another free kick from almost the exact same spot for all three kicks. Right here near sideline in front of the Auburn bench. Near side, that's Colson. Tries to send it in off the body of Becerra. Excuse me, of... Uh, for Texas A&M, Beckman. It's Georgia Lebb for Texas A&M. All right, Jeff, you've had about 15 minutes now. What are you seeing out there for both of these teams? Well, for, for A&M, their possession definitely has a purpose. Uh, everything they're doing is with intent. Um, you know, they're working around the back four. They're trying to find those gaps, trying to find those opportunities to go forward. But uh, they're looking to – this is long a good ball long forward. ball. Haddock trying to run onto a Katie Smith there for Texas A&M in the defense. And a great job by Smith. That was a deep run from, from – uh, Thatcher there to find that gap between Cornog, who's playing a little high, and Katie Smith. They're almost rewarded, but uh, AM very, very uh, finding the, the right opportunity to go forward, whether that's with speed, whether what's establishing possession with one pass, and then going forward, finding Pante, finding Colvin. And here you see that, that long ball over the top, again, bypassing the midfield. Thatcher in behind. Katie Smith with a good recovery run. Unfortunate header there for Thatcher. Quinn Cornog coming in as a second defender and cleaning it up. And with, uh, with Auburn, Auburn's not been able to, to sustain possession. They've, they've tried to get their outside backs involved. Uh, Whitaker more so than Colson in this first half. Played a little direct, but really not a whole lot of sustained possession from Auburn. They're sitting back, trying to keep everything in front of them, trying to deal with this A&M possession. Um, and just occasionally mixing in that long ball and looking for the counter. It'll be a throw in for Auburn on the far side of the field.
You see Haley Whitaker, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama. Long ball forward. And it'll dribble out of bounds. We talked about these two coaches here, both of them. 24th season for Karen Hoppe of Auburn, 30th for G. Guerreri. There you see Shelly Smith, Matt Mott, Colby Hale, all uh, with a lot of tenure at their respective universities. Interesting thing here, all five of those coaches, all very successful. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> Funny how that works out. It's amazing how this, uh, what this conference has turned into. Becerra. Takes a whack at it. It's going to send it wide right. It'll be a goal kick coming up. Uh, uh, no, okay with the decision there. Not not bad build for AM. Finding the ball wide. Becerra with a run from that attacking, that ball side attacking center mid. Gets herself into a position to receive it. Quality first there, touch there. Just not able to square her hips to goal and, and test Prohaska with that left-footed effort. Matty Prohaska. Goalkeeper for Auburn. Put the ball in play. Again, there's eight players in this Auburn starting lineup that have now started all 15 games for the Lady Tigers. And not only that, Dave, it's not just about consistency in that starting lineup, stabilizing your lineup. They've been able to avoid injury for the most part. 17 of the 29 players on this roster are junior, seniors, and grad students. Uh, they ha even have a seventh-year player on this roster, whereas you're looking at an A&M team that is incredibly young, one of the youngest teams in the country. Carlina Sample for Texas A&M. Good combination yep. play there, just not, uh, Beckman not able to redirect it with her foot into Colvin's run. Pante loses it out of bounds. Be a throw in for Auburn right in front of their own bench. They'll get the ball in. Long ball forward to Richards. Good tackle from Colzada there. Auburn with everybody behind the ball now. Yep. See, and there's Candelino. She's, she, 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 Candelino just jumped in that gap and cut off the drop ball from Smith to uh Oh, to nice Cordog. diagonal run there from Beckman. Tries to poke it through to Hayes. But a great run and great vision by Carolyn Calzada to see that ball or to see that run and lay the ball in. And Miley Hayes, because of her work ethic, because of how scrappy and relentless she is, she commands so much attention. So anytime she drops in with her back to goal, she's committing not one, if not both, of Auburn's center backs. And that opens up space in behind for those two attacking mids for Texas A&M to make those delayed runs. Katie Smith for Texas A&M. Tries to get the ball ahead to Miley Hayes. And it's going to go over the end line. And I'm going to say it's going to be a goal kick coming up for Auburn. And again, another great idea. Just a little bit heavy on that pass. Trying to find Hayes in on that near post. But Madeline Moore able to uh, able to usher that ball over the touchline. But watch what Auburn does, Dave. They've tried to do it a couple times now. When Candelino, she's going to stay high, but when she drops in, she's going to drop in really deep. And as she drops in, and kind of what time, kind of what A and M just tried to do with 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 Hayes and Beckman. If if Cornog and Smith step with her, that's going to open up kind of a center channel, and their outside forwards are going to start wide. And then the moment that both those center mids are drug into the midfield or drug deep with Candelino's off the ball movement, both of their wide forwards are going to are going to attack that space. And so that as Candelino drops, they lose their target forward, their center forward, but they gain two forwards from a wide position that make tight, tight runs into that space, trying to get in behind the center backs from Texas A&M. Ball intended for Becerra, broken up by Carly Thatcher for Auburn. Kelly 
Strikeouts out on the near side. It's Georgia Lebb, number 23 in the middle for Texas A&M. And this is where a has got to be a little bit careful because every time they pass the ball backwards, Auburn steps. And as they should, they step higher, they step higher, they step higher. When you string three or four negative passes together, all you're doing is inviting pressure and compressing the field in your defensive third. Hayes. Great run, great idea. Hayes just yep, a little just too a deep with that first time chip. But again, good runs by Texas A&M. Good movement in terms of the ball. Just And Hayes didn't win the ball there, but she did her job defensively. Her pressure slowed that counterattack opportunity from her forward position. That's number 16, uh, Carolyn Calzada for Texas A&M. She, as I mentioned earlier, she's been battling uh, some injuries, most notably a knee injury, missed the last four games. I was talking to the Texas A&M athletic trainer before the game, and she was going, you know, she is just such an amazing athlete. So many athletes, when they have an injury like that, it takes them a while to get to confidence back, as you see Colson trying to create some space there. She said, Calzada just didn't doubt it at all. She said, yeah, just let me play. I'm good, I'm good. And uh, she's gone 100% since she stepped back on the field. And so much of that, particularly with knees or ankles or things like that is, do you have confidence uh, that you can make the runs, make the cuts that you need to? That's a big, uh, big key to getting well. And for Colson, for uh, Calzada, it was there from the get go. Cross coming in, it'll be fielded. Uh, Slopin had a good look, sent the ball uh, in. Nobody there for Auburn to close on it. Most difficult thing about for Slopin about that was that she was making an, kind of an outside, yeah, she was uh, her, inside out. Her run's taking her away from goal, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just hard to get much on it. And you just saw there, Dave, what Auburn wants to do with their outside backs. Anytime they haven't been able to sustain much possession at this point, but whenever they're able to string a few passes together in the middle third, that invites their outside backs, you know, Whitaker and Colson, to get into the middle third and get higher in the field, leave their two center backs behind. Ball swung in. And they feel nice comfortable. Shot by sample. And they feel comfortable doing that, you know, with Moore and, and with Craven back there and just Miley Hayes. They're okay with that plus one. Again, two very experienced center backs for Auburn. So again, even more reason for AM to really press it. Anytime Auburn completes a couple passes, AM has got to put pressure on it and keep those keep those outside backs in check and not allow Whitaker and Colson to get through the middle third and into the attacking third. Just two shots so far for Texas AM, one of which has been on frame. It's Auburn with the counter here. Plays it out wide far side. Shot. Cleared by the Aggies. Diving save there by for, for Texas A&M by Kenna Caldwell. Turnover in the middle third. Auburn has numbers going forward. That block of four. Kenna Caldwell with a big save. Georgia Lebb there to, to, to clean it up. Yeah, and Sydney Richards for Auburn. Really had a, she had a good look. She took a good shot. It was just a good save. And Georgia Lebb, luckily for Texas A&M, was there to clear it off the line when it kind of dribbled away from Kenna Caldwell. Here we see Haley Whitaker again, 1v1 with Colvin in the attacking third. Colson keeping her shape on the other side. Well defended from Texas A&M. Shot goes into the body. Sarah, rebound comes back to Auburn. They're going to swing it near side. And loss out of bounds there off the foot of Carly Thatcher. Throw in Texas A&M. As I was going to say earlier, two shots for Texas A&M, one of which have been on frame. Now two shots for Auburn, one of which has been on frame. And there's Sydney Becerra, the freshman for Texas A&M. She was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Texas last year. Pasco players. Uh, you see scenes there from uh, Missouri and Georgia. He played there in Athens. And the Missouri on goal, on goal, unfortunately, 
for the Missouri Tigers. Puts the Georgia Bulldogs up one to nothing over Missouri. Yeah, just an errant clearance there off a teammate into the back of the net. Yeah. And all these games, we get toward the end of the conference play again. After tonight, just each team will have three conference games left to play. And they are all so important going into the SEC tournament in Pensacola. There you see the up-to-the-minute standings. Texas A&M can move into the thick of things with a win tonight. As the kick comes in, Auburn looking to solidify their position with a victory over A&M. This is the 13th time these two teams have done battle. The Aggies with an eight to four margin. Kenna Caldwell, the senior from Lone Tree, Colorado, gets her foot into it, Texas A&M. Sample loses her footing, and here come the Auburn Tigers. Play it out wide, near side to Thatcher. Well defended, well defended. Again, Calzada collapsed in, tight back four for Texas A&M. Waited for Pante to come over, second defender came in, able to step to that ball. Ball swung in by Colson, will go to the other side. And Colvin for Texas A&M will send it up well across the halfway line. It'll trickle all the way back to Matty Prohaska. And, and that's one thing I don't, I think when the opportunity presents itself, if, if Auburn's gonna play a high line, then sure, put it, put it over the top, put some air underneath it, let Miley Hayes or Beckman or Becerra run onto the ball. But with, uh, you know, with, with Madeline Moore and, uh, and, and Craven back there, Long balls probably aren't necessarily going to work. Those two have a lot, of, a, a lot of height, a lot of size back there on that back line between those two center backs. Uh, and, and that's a tall task for Miley Hayes by herself. Quinn Cornog, number 34 for Texas A&M. Just ran out of your picture. There she is again. Cornog, a transfer from Vanderbilt. She was on the uh, SEC All-Freshman team last year. Giveaway there for the Aggies. Auburn wanting a foul call there that would have uh, would have uh, resulted in a penalty kick, but it was not called. And I See, think wisely so. Looking, looking. Arias just came on the field. That what a tackle from Quinn Cornog. And I think a might have got away with one there. What a tackle. What an that initial was, that, tackle. That was a great tackle right there. Quinn Cornog. And then we see the second one. And I'm not sure the referee had the angle on that. AM dodges a bullet. Substitution during that last uh, stoppage there for Texas AM. Monty Hayes checks out of the lineup. And for the Aggies, Micaiah McDonald, who has five goals on the year, sophomore for Texas AM. She checks into the lineup. She'll be running up top. There she is, right there. You can see if AM can. Slide her in behind. A little shallow diagonal, let her run onto the ball. Trying to get Pante in here on that on that deep ship. Unable to. Mia Pante for Texas a and Another substitute coming in. It's going to be Carissa Beckman, who will check out of the lineup for the Aggies. And checking in will be Anderson Williams. She'll wear number six for the Aggies. There you see her right there. See Micaiah McDonald for Texas A&M, kind of drifting back, putting a little high pressure. Thatcher trying to turn, Calzada will knock it out of bounds. There you see Micaiah McDonald, sophomore, when she was a, uh, fr uh, a senior in high school, ran on a nation leading 400 meter relay team in high school. Had the fastest time in the nation. She has some wheels. If you watch her tonight, she kind of 
like a lot of players who have exceptional speed, sort of has another gear that the rest of us just don't have. And uh, you'll see your oh, kind of... You, you and I definitely don't have it, Dave. Uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, never have. Never have. Ball over the near side. Should be a corner kick coming up. Maddie Simpson just checked into the lineup moments ago. Wins the corner. Now you see McDonald just talking about second corner kick of the night for the Tigers. Haddock will take it. Sends it back in, shot, goal, Auburn. Flag stays down. Goal for the Auburn Tigers to go up one to nothing. And what a great ball over the top. We'll see it on the replay here. And I believe that was Whitaker that sent that ball in. Yeah, it was. Simpson Just that was able to get on the end of it. Bending ball. Found Maddie Simpson, beats Kenna Caldwell far post. Yeah, just a ball lifted in. Just a perfect ball. For Simpson, that's her fourth goal of the season. She's a junior out of Wausau, Wisconsin, her, the sixth of her career, and she puts Auburn up one to nothing. And the crowd is watching the replay, and, and they're, they're barking that there were multiple Auburn players, and that's why I was curious to see the replay when that ball was played in. Even though it ended up on the foot of Simpson, there were three others that were potentially in an offside position along the front of the six as A&M stepped after that corner kick. Here comes the Tigers again. Nice defensive play on the far side by Auburn to win the ball, but the Aggies get it right back. Sydney Becerra for Texas A&M. Back into the middle to Georgia Lepp. Swiss line of foul call there as uh, Mia Pante was getting held. Here's a great angle at it right here. And yeah, three, uh, when that ball was struck, three Auburn players were in an offsides position. But my only thought there, Dave, is that the this near side assistant referee did not think that the other two, with uh, Craven being one of those, I didn't get the number on the other one, were not in a position to receive the ball. Colvin sends the ball in, headed away. Well, not that I necessarily agree with that decision, but that's my interpretation of, of the assistant referee's mentality. Williams cleared it over to Colvin on the near side. Back to Georgia Webb. And if Auburn you're Auburn, comes up with it. That's uh, Marissa Arias. And Dave, if you're Auburn, your, your mentality has almost changed uh, because with as stingy as this team is defensively, maybe th now they think, well, that's all we need. You know, they're so so good defensively, and Prochaska is such a quality keeper back there. And um, you know, there, there's been a lot of one nothing and, and two one affairs throughout the season for this Auburn squad. Cornog for Texas A&M. Four shots for Auburn, two of which have been on frame. Two shots for Texas A&M. They put one between the pipes. Nice battle going on there between Mia Pante and Maddie Simpson.
You know, and we've kind of seen, you know, and we've, we've talked about this several times during the course of the season, but, you know, the ebb and flow of a soccer match. Texas A&M came out on the front foot. Then the teams kind of both settled into a rhythm, and now yeah, Auburn, kind of, you know, yeah. has kind of gotten on the front foot the last few minutes, one of which resulted in a goal. Uh, and so, you know, games kind of tend to ebb and flow. Uh, long ball forward. Foot race there between Hayden Colson and Mia Pante. And uh, Pante loses her footing, goes down, and they're going to say goal kick after all of that. Uh, that's unfortunate for Pante. She finally was able to get in, in behind on Colson. Not able to turn the corner and attack that near post or serve a ball into the box. Again, they've been trying to find ways to get her in. Katie Smith with that big ball bypassing the midfield. Colson caught ball watching a little bit. Kind of a little presumptuous here. Didn't realize that Pante was closing as quickly as she was, and Pante with that heavy touch kind of fell over the ball. Unfortunate for Texas A&M, missed opportunity. Great crowd here at Ellis Field tonight, Dave. Yeah, kind of building as the night goes on. This is a kind of a special weekend here in College Station from a soccer point of view. Long ball forward there. Cornog will cut it back in. Kind of Caldwell sends it high over the near side. Got a player down. Hayden Colson, she's up now, however, number 20 for Auburn. As you see, part of this crowd here tonight, it is also, I mentioned, a special weekend. It's reunion weekend for the uh, Texas A&M soccer team. About 80-plus former players here and over 250 uh, when you include families. They're going to have a big banquet tomorrow night. They had a big, uh, big uh, get-together just outside the stadium prior to the game. We've already seen a number of former soccer players here in the crowd. Just a great weekend of celebration. All kind of, not only a reunion in terms of soccer players, but also celebrating 50th year Title IX. Celebration going on all season long. Nice move there by Sabrina McNeil. Just checked, just checked in a minute ago. She's a... Uh, McNeil, number 21 for Auburn. Oh, you see her right there. She is a grad student out of Whitby, Ontario, Canada. But career-wise, she has 29 goals to go along with 13 assists. Substitution as well for Texas A&M. Macy Matula checks into the lineup for Mia Pante. Full slate of action this weekend, and uh, Georgia about to try to stretch that lead to two. Danny McGee facing the goal kick there. She buries it. Nice little clever kick right there. Just kind of a chip. She finds the back of the net. That puts Georgia up two to nothing over Missouri. Speaking of stretching leads, Auburn. Trying to do the same here in the waning minutes. Shot taken there. Going to go wide by Sydney Thibodeau. Again, Sabrina McNeil making an impact here. Again, on the ball, back to goal. Finds that diagonal. Sydney Thibodeau all by herself, about, about 12 yards away from goal, sends it wide. Thibodeau from Houston, Texas, just a few miles down the road between, excuse me, I said Houston, from Montgomery, Texas, just a few miles down the road between here and Houston. The Aggies looking to get on the front foot here in the last six minutes of the first half, find some of that rhythm that they had early on in the contest.
is Katie Smith, one of the captains for Texas A&M. Sending the ball up across the halfway line. Macy Matula. Ball picked off there by Haddock. I'm not Tri sure. Tripping from behind, I think. It was either that or offsides. Maybe she came back, Arias came back from an offsides that, position. That could have been. Dangerous ball there from Katie Smith. Back in the middle. That's Smith will launch it forward. Anderson Williams had a run, trying to split Whitaker and Madeline Moore, but couldn't do it. Prohaska will come over and pick it up. And we've got a whistle and another foul there called on the Tigers. It'll be a free kick coming up for Texas A&M, maybe six, seven yards into the attacking half. Oh, well, dangerous play there from Colson. Mason Matula went in, tried to head the ball. Colson comes in with her leg up. Dangerous close to Matula's face. Might have made a little bit of contact, but Matula's okay, it appears. Kenna Caldwell, she's she's been serving this ball all season for the Aggies. Boy, Auburn keeping an incredibly high line, 22 yards away from goal, top of the circle. A lot of space to chip this ball in behind. Caldwell sends it forward. Bounces just over the crossbar. That was Quinn Cornog right there, number 34 for Texas A&M, who was trying to close on the ball and get ahead on it. You see the ball bounces are just over her head. Yeah, that was a perfect ball from Kenna Caldwell. Floated bending ball. Again, froze Pahaska. Those runners had space to, to get in behind. So she had to pay attention to Cornog, who was who was really attacking that ball. So it kind of froze her about three yards away from goal. Got caught in no man's land a little bit. Ball ended up bouncing, almost beat her behind. You know, it was, it was a very, very well-timed run and a nice, nicely placed kick. Just, uh, I mean, that's the difference in most scoring opportunities. It's that inch. And that's Jai Smith just checked into the lineup for Kate Colvin on the far side of the field at outside mid, trying to run the ball down. Nice defensive effort over there by the Tigers. Good tackle from Carlina Sample there. A little bit of a heavy turn with the outside of the right foot from Makai McDonald. Gives the ball away in the middle third. Katie Smith for Texas A&M. Back to Caldwell. It's Cornog. Aggies trying to, this final buck 50 left in the first half, trying to find a way to unlock this Auburn defense. And it Cindy is Becerra. It is as advertised, Dave. Well, they just put a lot of people behind the ball when they when uh, and it and and they've got good athletes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the the back four is incredibly athletic. They're organized, they have size, they're physical. And again, they're very good at the counter, very effective on the counter. But as you said, and you alluded to it, Dave, it had been flowed the first 15 minutes. A&M was, was really established possession, was playing fast, was playing with a purpose. Auburn really was had trouble stringing two and three passes together. But, uh, you know, Auburn scores that goal off of a, a questionable non-call, off that uh, that corner kick rebound. And, and uh, they've really done a good job of, of putting some possession here together and dictating the flow of the game as the half has progressed. Mallory Mooney trying to turn on the ball. Loses it out of bounds. Calzada for Texas A&M will put it in play. Keep it here, Blue. Don't leave it. Sim, come to the middle. 
J.D. Smith back to Kenna Caldwell, and the Aggies will switch the field here as we're down to our last 30 seconds here in the first half. Sent out of bounds. And they say it's going to go belong to Auburn. So the Tigers will likely have the last crack here in the first half if they do it all. They're just content to let the seconds run off the clock. Jeff, you, you look at this first 45 minutes. What do you take away from this? Well, I think AM has, has, has got to, to revisit how they're truly going to attack this. this and through Auburn, they'll have the little bit of wind there is here tonight at their back, but to be honest about it, it's not enough to make a difference. Texas A&M, again, playing from behind here in the early moments of the second half, should have taken uh, some confidence out of their game against Ole Miss last Sunday where they had a lead, got tied in the last couple of minutes, and then won the game on a goal in the last three minutes. There you see Makaya McDonald, the speed that I talked about in the first half. She's looking to cross it, gets it off. And it's uh, Pante who tried to close it for Texas A&M. Couldn't get it, but the Aggies came right out of the gate. We see Makai McDonald playing an attacking center midfield, playing underneath. Miley Hayes as that, as that lone front runner for Texas A&M. And again, Miley Hayes, her work ethic commands so much attention. Her Relentless pursuit of the ball offensively and defensively commands so much attention from those two center backs for Auburn. That's going to open up some space in behind if they step with Hayes as she drops in with her back to goal to receive the ball. Maybe some space to McTie McDonald to use that speed and that athleticism that we just saw on display to get in behind and try to get in, uh, into those 1v1 situations with Prohaska. Daggies take it out of the scrum, start things over. Back in the Defending half. And I believe we might have lost, I believe uh, might have had a call on the far side for a ball lost out of bounds right on the line. And it'll be a throw in for Auburn here in the early moments of the second half. Again, more, kind of more of the same from Auburn. You know, for those first couple passes when AM established possession, they'll sit back in a 4 5 1, but as AM swings the ball around with their back four and with every negative ball, that allows that allows Auburn to, to step their lines, step their lines, step their lines, and then that 4-5-1 turns into a defensive 4-3-3, and then AM's back four is under a ton of pressure. Here we see Beckman laying it off for Hayes. Hayes takes a shot, just kind of drifting away from goal, trying to beat Prohaska far post. Not a bad idea in combination play with Beckman finding herself a little higher than Hayes. Hayes with a little bit of an underlapping run, trying to face up and, and beat Prohaska from distance. Can be Makaya McDonald. Send the ball ahead to Colvin. Cross coming in on the ground. Hayes, goal, Texas A&M. What great patience yep. by Miley Hayes right at the top of the six. And that, that's the key word, not just from Hayes. Great, the great win there from Kate Colvin through the midfield, gets played in, serves a dangerous ball in. Beckman kind of got it stuck underneath her foot. She didn't panic. She waited for that run from Hayes to develop. And then Hayes, again, finds it on her foot with a little bit of time and space. And boy, she might have been the beneficiary of a non-offside call there as well. So we're level when it comes to missed offsides calls. She's able to tuck it into the back of net to level this game one-to-one. -one. So how big is that from a, uh, when you take a, a, a very young team like Texas A&M who goes into the locker room with a lead there in the first oh, three minutes of the second half, ties the game back up. That's got to be a huge confidence build. Well, it, it's not only that, but it's um, it's that mentality, and I'm sure they talked about it at halftime. Is we we've been there before, um, you know, uh, we've been there before with with the game on the line, uh, you know, uh, against Ole Miss uh, just last week in a ranked team on the road, and they came from behind to, uh, or they they ended up Ole Miss tied the game up late in the game, and with three minutes left, A&M 
really, really put their foot on the gas and, and came away with the winner in the 87th minute, I believe. Throw in for Auburn here on the near side. Sydney Richards with the throw in. Kate Colvin comes out with it in the contest with Haley Whitaker. Colvin still with the ball. Whitaker closes the ground, and it'll be a throw in for Texas A&M. That's Georgia Lebb, the freshman. She has started there at that holding mid position now. Once Taylor Pounds for Texas A&M got hurt, Pounds a Junior started every game since she stepped foot on campus and then uh, suffered a broken bone in her foot. And Georgia Lebb has had to step up and uh, to fill those shoes. She's done a great job for the Aggies. in for Texas A&M and the Aggies with a goal in the early moments of the second half to tie this up at one. Be a throw in for Texas A&M on the far side. Great hustle play there by Emmy Craven. Shots are even up at five, as are shots on goal at two. Kate Colvin near side. And it's Haley Whitaker. McDonald. Out of bounds and a throw in for Auburn right in front of the Aggie bench. There you see my Micaiah McDonald. We talked about her speed in the first half. Aggie switched the field near side. Or not for Texas a &M. Texas A&M exercising a little bit of patience here. And we're going to have a throw in now for Auburn. Right in front of their own bench. The goal kick coming up. There you see Sydney Richards, a senior from Plano, Texas. And Dave, I, I thought it might have just been situational, but it looks like AM has changed their shape into a 3 5 2, which is what they played a majority of, uh, of the season in before. Uh, they started, uh, they played a couple games in the 4 4 2 and then most recently in the 4 1 4 1. But I thought Quinn Cornog was just stepping higher situationally, but it looks like she's going to be paired with George Aleppo that holding midfield position. Nice touch there from McDonald to Beckman, and that's ahead to Miley Hayes. She's trying to turn the corner and does, slots it in. McDonald couldn't get a foot on it and redirect it toward goal. I mean, what a brilliant effort. Wow by Miley Hayes. And what a great ball in here. Back to goal, one-on-one -on -one against Craven. Able to turn the corner. Try to find Makai McDonald. Just unable to make solid contact with the ball. All started with that ball in right there from, from Backman. Great second touch to turn the corner. Craven didn't want to give up the, uh, give up the PK. 
Prochaska there to clean up the loose ball inside the six. Big time missed opportunity for Texas A&M. But again, kind of starting out the same way that the first half did, Dave. A&M really on the front foot here in the opening minutes of the second half. Long ball forward. It's Thatcher on the far side for Texas A&M. Cleared away by the, excuse me, for Auburn. Cleared away by Texas A&M. Out of bounds, let's see, will be awarded to Texas A&M. The Aggies will have the throw in on the far side. Mia Pante will take it. Kaya McDonald. To Colvin here near side. Cross comes in, cut off nicely there. Auburn has really dropped their lines deep to try to deal with this A&M possession. That's Pante to Beckman. Georgia Lebb for Texas A&M. Back to Carolyn Calzada. Pante. And it will be a throw in for Texas A&M on the far side of the field. There's Mia Pante, the Canadian uh, U-20 national team player, played down in the World Cup. U-20 World Cup for uh, Canada. I've really been impressed with Madeline Moore tonight, along with Emmy Craven, but Moore. Yeah, her understanding of, of space uh, and when to step and commit to a ball is, is uh, really, really impressive. Good effort there by Texas A&M. Hayes, gonna take a shot. I think that went off of Nope, I thought it went off the back or shoulder of Madeline Moore, but our center official says no, and it'll be a goal kick coming up. Good little bit of technical creativity there. Kind of a bouncing ball, takes it off the chest, settles it, juggles it, then settles it. Tries to prepare the ball just a little too flat and heavy on that, on that touch. Wasn't able to, to get her hips square to goal. No, and it wasn't close to Madeline Moore. That's just another reason why I'm not out there officiating. <laughs> not that we, we don't have enough space on this page for the, all the reasons, but uh, <laughs> that's just another one. Goal kick coming up for Texas A&M, Kenna Caldwell. We'll take it. Nice turn by Kate Colvin. Georgia Lev with a pass to Mia Pante. Nice through ball there for Texas A&M. Nice ball handling there by Mia Pante. And to, to Hayes. Cuts it away. Hayes doing a great job working across that back four, finding pockets of space and making herself available for those diagonals from the flank. Again, Miley Hayes has such a reliable and consistent first touch that regardless of what type of ball is played into her, she has the ability to handle it 
whether that's played into feet from the center channel from one of her attacking mids, whether that's a driven service from the flank from Pantair Colvin. So she, again, she's working those pockets of space in between Colson and Craven, in between Craven and Moore, in between Moore and Whitaker, making herself available to every ball. She's really, really admirable what she's doing on her ball line. We saw that crowd shot earlier. That was behind the visitor's goalkeeper, in this case, Matty Prohaska. Crowd tends to move from one end of the field to the other here at Ellis Field. And they're all just trying to be helpful uh, to the visiting goalkeeper. Just, just providing advice. Yes. And so... Uh, about soccer, about life, about choices. Sure. with the ball there. That's Georgia Lebb. Gathers it in after the pressure from Cornog. McDonald, the ball in. Diagonal run there by Beckman, but sent away, and here comes Auburn on the counter. Thatcher on the far side. Does well to keep that ball away from Calzada. Nice overlap there by Cal uh, Cal Candelino, excuse me, and it'll be a throw in coming up. You see number 13, Mia Pante, and number 16, Carolyn Calzada for Texas A&M. Number 14, Sid Richards, Sidney Richards for Auburn. 17 goals during her career. Ball cleared out of bounds by Texas A&M. Another throw in for Auburn. Now you see some of the fan base here at Texas A&M. The Aggies always among the nation's leaders in attendance. This is such a, I challenge you to find a better playing surface anywhere in the country, college pro, you name it. Corner kick coming up now for Auburn. Well defended there. Uh, Carlina Sample one on one with Candelina deep. Candelina rather deep in the uh, in the attack and third, looking to, to turn and face and serve a ball across. And a Haddock will take the corner. Here come the Aggies looking to counter there. Micaiah McDonald, Miley Hayes on the far side. McDonald. Still going one-on-one -on -one with Whitaker. Looking for the cross. It'll be a corner coming up for Texas A&M. The first of the night for the Aggies. Well done there by Makai McDonald. The rebound ends up at her foot. Deep within Aggie territory. Just goes on a 70-yard dribble. Miley Hayes is the only one running, and she's covered by the two center backs from Auburn. Does well to win the corner there off of Whitaker. So it'll be Mia Pante with the left-footed in swing and corner. Jai Smith has checked in for Texas A&M, along with Sydney Becerra. Low driven ball coming in, headed away by the Tigers. Ball sent back in on the hop. And that last change there for the Aggies with Becerra and Smith checking in, it was uh, Carissa Beckman and Makaya McDonald who came out of the lineup for Texas A&M. Aggies with the ball over on the near side. I'm noticing a little bit high, uh, higher pressure by Auburn here in the second half than, than what we saw often in the first half, I think. Yeah, and, and again, it, it, again, they've recognized that A&M has, has changed their shape. They're in a the back three, so anytime they start to, and again, A&M wants to build out of the back. They like to build out of the back. They like to keep the ball on the ground and establish possession and work it through all three levels of their tactical shape. But every time there's, with every negative ball, 
from right back to center back, left back to center back, back to Kenneth Caldwell. That allows Auburn to, to kind of get out of that 4-5-1 shape defensively. And with every negative ball, it allows them to step higher and higher up the field and take more of a 4-3-3 look and go a little bit more high pressure. During that last stoppage, a couple of substitutions for Auburn. Marissa Arias checked into the lineup, as did Sabrina McNeil. And I imagine, Dave, as this game, as this, in the last 26 minutes or so of this second half, you're going to see them play in a, in a much more dedicated 4-3-3. Again, in a three 1v1 opportunities with space to work in behind. So I think Auburn might try to establish some possession through the middle third, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them, again, dedicate themselves to the 4-3-3 and play a little bit more direct and try to take advantage of that change in shape for Texas A&M. Cold kick comes out. Cornog will play it out to Sample on the near side. That's Sidney Becerra. Calzada on the far side. Into the middle to Hayes and a little bit of space. She's going to take a crack from distance and send it over the crossbar into the crowd behind the goal. Not a bad idea at all. Uh, Craven gave her a ton of space to turn into. She was able to attack Craven on the dribble. And Craven did commit. Or was that more? That was more, rather. My apologies. She is able to create enough space, just got underneath the ball just a little bit, sent it over the crossbar. Calzada ahead to Pante. Against Colson on the far side. You know, in one of these things, it's it's if you're a if you're a younger soccer player, you see Hayden Colson, number 20 for Auburn. If you're a younger soccer player, to watch these two teams do when they're playing well, when both of these teams, I don't care if you're Texas A&M or Auburn, when they're when you're playing well, you're playing simple soccer. You're making the simple pass, connecting passes together. Just like that, just yep. kind of the simple stuff, and you just keep stringing them together, creating space. And 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 again, that that whether you're Texas A&M or Auburn, that was a series of just simple passes right there. Shot goes into the body. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of a lot of, of kind of coaching cliches you can that are applicable to that situation. You know, play the way you face, let the ball do the work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and that's that's what AM's trying to do in possession here. They're really trying to pull Auburn out of that defensive shell, open up space, establish 1v1s with Colson and Pante with space to work in behind so they they can avoid drawing a second defender. Col Colvin nice job there. there by Kate Colvin to win a corner for Texas A&M. And it goes back to uh, one of the one of my favorite sayings, Texas A&M associate head coach Phil Stevenson has. We'll get back to that right after this replay here. Uh, nice hustle play by. Yeah, no options there. Just does Colvin. well. To, yeah, just to win the corner. Just to win the corner kick. There you see right there without the cap on. That's Phil Stevenson, the associate head coach, just saying when you when, you're, when you have the ball, you're playing. When you don't have it, you're working. Yep. So possess the ball, string passes together, and play. Through ball. That's Arias. Slows it up, waits for help, back, tried to do the uh, back heel pass, but the Aggies break that up. That was some danger right there for Texas A&M, but the Aggies did a good job of yep, recovering. Sure did. A great run from Arias there. SEC season starts to uh, wind down here after tonight. Each 
one of these teams will have three games left. There you see Auburn's tough visit, uh, tough game against Tennessee, and then a tough road trip to LSU. And then they've got number two ranked Alabama at home, which just, they have just been really, really good this year. Aggies come forward, far side. That's Anderson Williams for Texas A&M, I believe. That's Miley Hayes on the ball. Yep, Miley Hayes, you're exactly right. My eight and my sixes get all tangled up. Throw in on the far side. And for Texas A&M, it's, again, they've got three games left. Maybe a touch. I was going to say easier, but I'm not sure with three games left, anything's easy. And it certainly doesn't start out easy with a trip to South Carolina on Thursday. And then they've got uh, Missouri at home, and then they have to get back on the road again to go to Florida. And that's really a game yeah, that... Uh, yeah, I know what you're going to say, Dave. It's, it's, I don't care what Florida's record is. Uh, that is a silly foul for Auburn. Yep, Great it opportunity sure is. for Texas A&M. I don't care what Florida's record is. It's never easy to play the Florida Gators in Gainesville. Well, no, it's not, and it's not just that. It's right now they are winless in the SEC, and they're not going to be unlikely to go to the SEC tournament. Hey, buddy. And so if it's the last game, they're just going to go 800 miles an hour, and they're going to be tough <laughs> against anybody. They're tough anyway, but, you know, if you're Texas A&M, that's, that's a particularly tough game. Any road game is tough, but that one is even worse. So uh, Auburn with, with a seven-man wall, eight-man wall, almost a family portrait there. Sydney Becerra on the ball about 20 yards away from goal. We've seen her hit this, put this on frame. We've seen her score from this, this distance. I fully expect Absolutely. her to, to take a shot here. Becerra for Texas A&M. Shot high. Just got a little bit too high. Yeah, but it lean, was going to be tough with that wall. Yeah, leaned back just a little bit, got underneath the ball. Did you really say family portrait? Yes, I did. Yep. Okay. Have you been kind of have it that? Have you had that filed away for a while, <laughs> waiting to use it? Waiting or, for the opportunity. Or was that just uh, off the cuff brilliance? A anytime you get beyond the, the the four man wall, you're getting into family portrait territory. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a note of that. I thought that was really good. Arias running onto the ball. Katie Smith there contesting it. And Kenna Caldwell Good comes decision. out to smother it. Good Great. decision. You're right. Caldwell there. Loose ball. Both players kind of lost. Just enough space. Came off her line early enough and very decisive. Never hesitated. Fully committed to making that save. Good decision from Kenna Caldwell. Who really hasn't been tested in this second half. Colvin for Texas A&M. Sabrina McNeil, number 21, with a tough defense as she, along with Madeline Moore, provided the pressure there. Some mutual holding going on over there, and let's see who's going to be whistled for. It was Whitaker and Pante going Just, after each other. It's been an absolute battle between those two all night. Yeah, you're right, it has been. I mean, two really, really good players. Long ball forward, Arias trying to run onto it again for Auburn, she does. Katie Smith for Texas A&M. These are two players who have mixed it up in the last few minutes. Good poke tackle there from Katie Smith to win that ball. Great effort there by Quinn Cornock. She has played a heck of a game for Texas A&M, just been all over the place. I'm not sure there's a player on the A&M roster that times their tackles better than Quinn Cornog. Just, not just a, a clean technical tackle, but again, just before, just before Haddock tries to create space with that next touch. Turnover there, here comes Auburn. Shot. Oh, oh, what a save off of save. the foot of Sammy Brown. It'll be a corner kick for Auburn, but that was just about a goal. Kenna Caldwell for the Aggies. It's just a terrible giveaway from Georgia Lebb here. Sammy Brown finds herself about eight yards away from goal. Tries to beat Kenna Caldwell. Deflection. 
off of a sliding Katie Smith. Caldwell's momentum was going the other way. Just a quick reaction save with her hand to usher that over the touchline. Could be a game saving moment for Kenna Caldwell. Olivia Candelino checks into the lineup for, all, uh, for Auburn. For Arias. Marissa Arias, it'll be a goal kick coming up for Texas A&M. Caldwell launches one, headed back by Auburn. Come the Aggies trying to get something set up into the middle of the field. Becerra from Hayes there. Just a little too heavy for Becerra. Now Becerra sends the ball in. Jai Smith on the near post trying yeah. to redirect that. Kind of overrun the ball a little bit. Unable to find another AM attacker there on the far post with that flick. Hayes again, square ball over near side to Becerra. Jai Smith, top of the 18, plays it out to Colvin on the near side. Kate Colvin. And a big collision there between Jai Smith and Emmy Craven. I don't think that was, uh, it, uh, it, it, it drew some. Drew some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd, you're Great right. Great service. But, yeah, there, and there was not anything, a lot there. Yeah, not a lot there. If anything, that might be a corner kick, but uh, goal kick nonetheless. Collision there between two Aggie players. Carlina Sample. Quinn Cornog, they're both up now. That's Calzada. She'll chip the ball forward to Miley Hayes. Lost out of bounds, throw in Texas A&M on the far side of the field and the substitution for both teams. Macy Matula will check in for Texas A&M. Carly Thatcher, along with Sydney Richards, will go in for Auburn. Checking out, it's gonna be Kate Colvin uh, for Texas A&M. Sabrina McNeil will come out of the lineup. And I have missed the second player who came out for Auburn. Oh, that was uh, Maddie Simpson who checked out of the lineup for the Tigers. Ball into the middle of the field. Miley Hayes sends the ball forward. That is Mia Pante trying to run onto it in a foot race over on the far side of the field with Thatcher, Carly Thatcher. It goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Auburn. Thatcher sends the ball ahead. Sydney Richards back inside to Thatcher. Ahead to Thibodeau. Go out of bounds and be a throw in for Auburn just into their attacking half of the field. Corner kick coming up for Auburn. Sydney Richards wins it. Subs for both teams here. Yeah, Makai McDonald will check back into the lineup for Jai Smith. And Anna Haddock will check in for Sydney Thibodeau. Corner kick comes in, sent away by Texas A&M. Again, another great decision from Kenneth Caldwell there. Elevated above the crowd to punch that ball away. 
That was Beckman tried to play it down the line. Yeah, there you see Kenna Caldwell right there for Texas A&M. Again, this is not a situation you want to try to, to catch the ball if you're a goalkeeper. Again, just fully extended that right arm, punched it away from that crowd. Smart goalkeeping from Caldwell. Beckman. That's Macy Matula on the far side for Texas A&M. Sent out of bounds by Auburn. Clears the stands over into the what was the old uh, softball field here at Texas A&M. See Hayden Colson. Been very impressed with number 20 for Auburn. Colson's a freshman out of Denton, Texas. Ball sent out of bounds by Texas A&M. Yeah, after tonight, just three games left to play for each of the teams in the conference as we get down toward the end. If you look at the, uh, these are up to the minute standings in the SEC. See the Georgia Bulldogs there, picks up a huge three points to get up into that 10 range. And uh, you're getting close to being absolutely dead solid certain to get into the SEC tournament when you get up into that level. And maybe not having to play on that first Sunday, which is a heck of a big deal. Substitution for Texas A&M. Mia Pante. That's going to be Macy Matula who will check out of the lineup. Kate Colvin, number two there for Texas A&M, will check in. There you see. Macy Matula checking out. She has been uh, incredibly valuable to Texas A&M due to injuries on the back line. She dropped back and played left back for the Aggies. Played uh, outside mid on the left-hand side for Texas A&M. Just one of those tactically versatile, valuable utility players. Here comes Auburn. Anna Wesh plays the ball into the middle. And now back out wide near side. That's Thatcher looking for the cross. Did she get it off? She did. Get It'll that. be cleared away by Texas A&M and a throw in for Auburn. Thatcher Emmy Craven. rivals Carolyn Calzada for fastest player on the field. She can, she can cover some ground. Candelino tries to send it in. It's go over the end line. And they're going to say corner kick coming up for Auburn. This is their sixth corner kick of the night. So we were talking again about this ebb and flow. First part of the second half, all Texas A&M on the front foot. Yep. Now it's balls kind of the game's kind of transitioned back as the corner kick comes in and lost over the end line. Game's kind of transitioned back. Last uh, five minutes or so, it has been Auburn yep. with most we've of the possession them, and the biggest threats. And we've seen them establish a little bit more possession through the middle third, and then take those long ball opportunities, those diagonals, to try to get uh, try to get Thatcher in and, and try to get uh, Sydney Richards in over there on that right side. Miley Hayes looking to play it out to the near side, trying to get it to Colvin. It was Thatcher who got a foot up there, but the Aggies get the ball back. Becerra. Auburn Square did well to get to numbers Beckman. behind. To Hayes over to the far side to Pante. Mia Pante takes it down, looks for the cross, and it's going to go over the inline corner kick coming up for Texas A&M. Just the fourth corner kick of the night, or I said should say the fourth coming of the night for Texas A&M. Six for the Auburn Tigers. It'll be Kate Colvin who will take this as a right footed in swinging corner. Great shot there of Kate Colvin. And up going to put eight players in the box to try to attack this corner. Colvin sends the ball in. Cornock kind of chested it down, but it's sent away by an Auburn player. It'll be a throw in for Texas A&M on the near side of the field. There you see Quinn Cornock 
for the Aggies, the transfer sophomore from Vanderbilt. Give and go there with uh, Makaya McDonald. She gets tangled up but gets free. McDonald still with the ball. Back to Cornhaw. That's Calzada. To Pante on the far side. Trying to find Becerra there. Unable to. Not able to connect. Ball ahead to Pante, who's moved over to this side. It'll be cleared out of bounds. Emmy Cra Craven left no doubt. <laughs> Sent that uh, <laughs> just about through the uh, side railing here on the near side. McDonald for Texas A&M. Back out to Pante. She's going to chip the ball in. It'll go over everything. Uh, she'd like to have that one back. She hit that first touch. I think she could have taken a touch and served a better ball in, but uh, again, AM responding uh, here with uh, just over five minutes yeah, left. Yeah, as, as the flow of this game kind of moves back yep. toward this side, uh, to the right side of the field. More substitutions from Auburn, try to deal with absorbing this AM possession, this AM pressure. There you see Maddie Prohaska. And surprisingly, Whitaker coming off. Maybe she's winded. comes Auburn. Nice ball out wide near side. That's Mallory Mooney. No, I take that back, Dave. Hey, Whitaker is not winded. They have changed their shape. They're going with a three back. So Auburn looking to go for it here. Sammy Brown plays it out wide far side. Five minutes left to go. They're going to throw numbers at AM's back three. So AM are going to have to be really, really disciplined and, and a little bit more kind of opportunistic and conservative when going forward with Calzada and Sample. Nice, nice hustle play there by Anna Haddock to drift back, win the ball. Can't maintain it, but nonetheless, the Aggies had a little bit of a counterattack brewing and Haddock hustled back to win it. But that's more space, so they're going to play a tight three and there's more space, more opportunity for Colvin and Pante on the flanks. Mooney on the dribble toward the middle of the field, just outside the top of the D, sends the ball in. Fielded there by Kenna Caldwell. Good look, good opportunity for Auburn there. Yeah, Mooney had some space. Just, just didn't get a whole lot behind it. Just kind of floated it to Caldwell. Caldwell easily handles that. Under four minutes now left to play. That's what you can't do is bad giveaway through the middle third. Haddock has it poked away by Cornog. Auburn gets it right back. Back to Haddock. Again, the Aggies pick it off now ahead to Micaiah McDonald. Emmy Craven is going to win it. Colson sends a long ball forward. Kenna Caldwell will field it for Texas A&M. So A&M to step high, step a little higher, get numbers forward. Colson for Auburn, chips it across into the attacking half. Carolyn Calzada, bring it back for Texas A&M. Out on the flank to Colvin, into the middle. Texas A&M, shot, goal, Texas A&M, the Aggies! Miley Hayes! What a smart run for Miley Hayes. Just a brilliant exchange there for the Aggies. And, and with just a little over, a little under three minutes, the Aggies go out in front two to one. Miley Hayes for Texas A&M. Colvin plays this ball in. Big touch from Hayes there to split more and Craven. Brahaska forced to come off her line 1v1. No doubt about it, Miley Hayes. No chance for Brahaska there. Yeah, just a beautiful ball in. Yeah, Miley Hayes had separated herself from Moore, who is playing center back, put herself in that gap. 
between Moore and Craven. Kate Colvin plays that square ball. Big first touch to get herself into that space. Opened up her stride and accelerated to the ball. Got in there 1v1 for Hoska. Now for Texas A&M, what they have to do is refocus. Play some solid defense as they send the ball in. And maybe start to find the corners in possession and, and kill some clock. Get there, get there. There's Beckman to Jeez. Hayes down to Pante in the corner. As predicted. Hannah, get Pante takes it down. Right inside the corner there. Waiting for Auburn to try to get it out. And they do. And here come the Tigers. This is the first time all season that Auburn has allowed more than one goal in a game. Long ball forward, Miley Hayes runs onto it. And she's going to take it down into the corner. They're going to say throw in Auburn. Quinn Cornard content to send the ball out of bounds. Auburn with the throw in. AM is as in response to Auburn has changed their shape, gone back to four in the back. More of a four-five-one look with Miley Hayes up top by herself. Anderson Williams into the game. Provides a little bit of size and physicality at that center mid position. Out wide, far side. Chipped in. Pante. I have it go off of her head. And the seventh corner kick of the night as we're under a minute. Auburn will have an opportunity. Anna Haddock will go over to take it. Right footed in swinging corner for the Auburn Tigers. They send the ball in all the way through. And goal kick coming up for Texas A&M. Thirty seconds left in the contest. Texas A&M and Auburn. Nice pass there by Miley Hayes to Pante. Pante on the loose, cuts it into the middle. Carissa Beckman, go! Texas A&M. With eight seconds remaining. Why kill the clock when you can score a third goal? Great recognition there from Mia Pante. Had intentions of taking that to the corner and working some clock. Caressa Beckman got in behind Moore, got in behind Craven on the weak side. Pante recognizes that, plays an easy ball into Carissa Beckman. Great patience, 1v1 with Prohaska. Tucks it into the back of the net. 3-1 Texas A&M. Here's Pante on the ball. Just a little toe poke there. Beckman in uncontested. Little cut, finishes it. And that'll do it, 3-1, Texas A&M. Eight seconds remaining. That's the 12th shot of the night for Texas A&M. Five have found the back of the net. Or five have uh, been on frame, three of which have found the back of the net. And Emmy Craven will send this ball off of the get-go. Kenna Caldwell will save it. And that's going to do it. The Aggies come away with a 3-1 victory over the... Auburn Tigers.